Well, okay, okay. So, so I feel like we have to, I mean, come, uh, you know, Mark of the Beast, right? right? Like we have to talk about that briefly, right? Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. um, I think that could be, a, let's use that as a case study okay. uh, of a particular passage in Revelation and uh, for a little bit of context. And I think this is slowly um, going out of favor, I guess. Yeah. But this whole fixation with it's a microchip or it's a whatever, it's a chip in your credit card. It's, you know, all a the, it's a vaccine. Yeah. Whatever it is T- whatever people don't like. gets poked into you, it's like, that's what it is, you know. Right. Um, and that, again, I've it. heard this in so many different forms for years and years and years of my life. And to the point where I was just like, you know what? I don't even care anymore because mm-hmm. it's just like, this is just, it's I don't know. Crazy. I don't know. Right. It's just, it's so confusing. And <laughs> right. people are telling me all these different things. But all of the interpretations that I was hearing were, it will be some kind of literal thing mm-hmm. at the end of time where Christians will have to choose, you know, will they get this mark with this microchip, this right. whatever. Um, I'd love to hear yes. your opinion on this. So this is important because it is, and, and to our to our younger crowd, I think it's important to say the mark of the beast is it actually a really important thing to think about. It is very high stakes. Hmm. Right? You it you don't you don't want to get the mark of the beast. Like it's bad news. Hmm. So um to the older or to the to maybe I shouldn't divide it that way, but um <laughs> with to the dispensational style reading of the text, um it's hugely important, but it's not important in the way it's not important in the way that it was thought to be with, oh, am I going to get tripped up by a chip or something? Mm-hmm. But it is very high stakes. And I think, again, I think that speculation on pieces of technology actually can be a cop-out and can cause us to stop wondering whether or not we have been marked by the beast. So let's look at it really quick. Yeah. yeah. So what's fascinating is that the mark of the beast hap- comes side by side with another mark. Um, so it's in Revelation 13 is where we have... Um, sort of verses 11 to 18, the mark of the beast. So um, this second beast causes all, both small and great, to be marked on the right hand or the forehead so that no one can buy or sell unless he has the mark. What is the mark? Well, he says, it's the name of the beast. Okay. Or the number of its name. Now, what do you think of when you think of the name or the number of its name? Let's say you were John's first readers. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. Well, the, in that case, it'd be like start finding. It's start, Gematria. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It I was trying to remember the, the term. Name. But, it uh, says it's the name of the beast or okay. the number. Right. It's like it says it's something's name. Okay. And then it's and then Paul, uh, John says this calls for wisdom. Let the one who has understanding calculate the number of the beast for it's it's somebody's it's a number a person's number and his number is six hundred sixty six. But then the very next thing that Paul, that John does, chapter fourteen verse one. Then I looked. And behold, on Mount Zion stood the Lamb, and with him, 144,000, representing the fullness of God's people, who had his name and his father's name written on their foreheads. And I heard a voice from heaven like the voice of of many waters Mm. sounding and whatever. And then verse 9, another an angel shows up saying, if anyone worships the beast and its image and receives a mark on his forehead or his hand, he will receive wrath. So it's it's the, the mark of the name of the beast is side by side with the mark of the name of God on your forehead, mm. right? Nobody ever interprets that as though it were a piece of, I don't know, godly technology or something, right? Oh, yeah. Okay. Okay. I, I see what you're doing You there. cannot separate them, right? You cannot, sep- you cannot ever talk about the mark of the beast as though it's a standalone thing. It's not. Yeah. It's, okay. The, Revelation is full of these, these dichotomies, right? There's, um, there's the lamb, there's the beast. There's the prostitute and the bride. There's, you know, there's the judgment, new creation. There's, there's uh, the seven hills of Rome and there's Mount Zion, right? It's, wow. it's all of that. And there's a stamp on humans of the name of the beast or the name of the lamb. Like, would, would it be appropriate to think of this almost like an, a branding? Exactly. Uh, like like, like uh, old style, like cattle brand you. or something. Yeah, or, 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 brand or, or a slave brand, yeah. which would happen <clears> in the ancient world. And he's basically putting he's he's contrasting these two off of each other. Okay, well now. So he's... if you're st- if you're stamped with the name of of Jesus or God, mm-hmm. this means for one thing that you will you will be exempt from ju- the final judgment, right? And okay. this actually comes okay. from Ezekiel. There's this mark of God that God's people are stamped with to avoid Ooh. judgment. So Wait, he's okay. pulling that straight from Ezekiel. Do, do you know where that is in Ezekiel? Just if anybody yeah, wants it's to look Ezekiel, that up. it's Ezekiel 9. Okay, I'm going to yeah. read that afterwards. That's a great, I hadn't thought of that. Right, that's fascinating. Um, so, okay, okay. okay. So, so, what it, so what it means though is that, yes, you're, you're stamped 
that means you belong to, it believes you belong to Jesus, right? That's what it means. It's a branding. It's, it's saying, I, I belong to Jesus. I'm a Jesus person. I'm, I bear his name. So just like Israel was supposed to bear God's name in the Old Testament, or like the high priest had on his forehead, holy to Yahweh. Hmm. Um, all of God's people are those who are stamped with allegiance to the Lamb. Okay, so so I'm really curious here. Why did John put a number with this beast mark and say 666? Not 666, but right. 666. It's, yeah, it's, 666. it's 666. Um, so right. uh, that has tripped up people a lot, yeah. especially again. I'm thinking more here in America in, in the last right. exactly. in the last few decades. Exactly. But um, but so again, the first the, the most important things is to say is whatever this is, it's the antithesis of being sealed with God's name, mm-hmm. being somebody who is says, I belong, my allegiance is not to the beast. My allegiance is to Jesus. And that might mean I, I suffer a lot in this life, but it means I'm going to be saved from final judgment. It means I, I live as somebody who, like a priest who bears God's name. Mm-hmm. So this is the opposite. So this one would think implies um, being stamped by allegiance to the the world, right? as represented in the beast. And specifically, um, John doesn't mention any specific name, but he mentions this number. And the the common, the, the most common interpretation of this is that it represent it stands for the words Nero Caesar. Hmm. Okay. Um, not all scholars think that, but that's the majority, the majority take. Hmm. Um, so again, if you write out the name Nero Caesar using Hebrew characters, um, it comes out to 666, right? Mm. Now, why? Why does he say this? Why doesn't he just say yeah. it's Nero? Yeah. Um, well, I think a couple of reasons. One, again, this is how this type of literature tends to work. Is think of the sibling oracles, mm. where for some reason, even though it's describing a whole list of king of emperors, Roman emperors that were known to the people, it does it in a more in a cryptic fashion rather than just come out and say it. It seems to imbue more symbolic meaning, hmm. um, more theological significance, more a sense of this is kind of scary, but God knows what's going on type of thing, um, right? So I think that's one of the that's one of the reasons. This is an enemy figure, and so it, it's described more cryptically. But I think also it's that Nero. Nero himself is is simply a stand-in for the the head of the beast, right? That this isn't supposed to be just okay. the historical Nero, and that's it. Well, uh, that was my ne- very next question. Was yeah. like, oh, well, then that means this is locked to this specific mm-hmm. piece but, of history. But no, you're. And is this because there's so much going on about Rome, but Rome as an archetype yeah, against exactly. God's people? Yes. Say. And Nero is a great example of that, actually, like a really, really horrible person who yes. persecuted Christians, persecuted you know, Christians, like at, a, at an incredible level. Right. Um, and he also, so he also, some of the imagery that, that is spoken of here, mm-hmm. Nero had some of these weird legends associated with him. Like he, he died, but some people thought, claimed that, no, he actually wasn't dead or maybe he was dead, but he was going to come back someday. Oh, wow. Right? So he's like a great stand in for like the anti-Messiah. Because oh, wow. a lot of similar stuff that's spoken of Jesus, right? He mm. died, but will return or whatever. There's There are various legends about Nero or expectations around this time that kind of like Elvis or something. Maybe he's not dead or maybe he'll come yeah, back. Yeah, maybe he'll right? come back, yeah. And so he's perfect for this kind of thing, right? Again, as an archetype. Yeah. So, okay. Because so, he was already gone by the time Revelation was written. I was going to say he would have been dead by. So it's then. not like the people were like, oh, good. Nero's, this stands for Nero, Nero's gone. That means I don't have to worry about getting marked by the beast. No, no, no. It's saying that the beast, Rome, mm. as, sta- as a stand-in for God's, the power of God's enemy, right? Mm. Um, and its head, its, its, its human leader as, as symbolized by Nero, right? Mm-hmm. That's, that, is, that is the beast, right? And then being marked by the beast means to be branded with allegiance to that figure or that pattern of figures, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. And this, the reason this is so powerful and important, I think, is that um, it's, uh, it's again, it speaks to, just like the rest of the New Testament, Revelation is mm-hmm. not saying something different from the rest of the New Testament. It's the same thing. This speaks to our heart. That's the thing I hate most about wondering about the mark of the beast being some piece of technology, getting, oops, I just 
got the wrong credit card and now I'm, now I'm going to hell or something. Um, that has nothing to do with one's heart. But what John is talking about is where is your allegiance? Are you living your life now marked by, this, by God's name on your head or the world system, the name on your head? And that, that, that's, that's a really convicting thing because it's, it's the, those, the pressures from society. Um, I can make more money. I can be successful if I give myself to, um, the power and pleasure of the markets, or I can get my sort of my tribes, um, policies in place. If I give myself to a certain political party, as some of our people are doing, 